Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelove and this is Speedplay Cossacks number one. We're starting off as Hayaxi off in Far East Asia. We are a nomadic country, we are a horde, and we have terrible relations with all of our neighbors, except kind of Ming, which is rather okay with us, but nothing really great. At any rate, we first of all take a mission which gives us claims on Yurin and Zhengzhou, and we have a rather powerful military which we're able to just sort of bring together, and we declare war on Yurin and move our forces up against them. We built two additional groups of cavalry, which should give us a rather powerful military. We managed to completely stack wipe Yurin's army, which is the greatest possible way to start a war. So we begin splitting our army up. Our main concern now is to just occupy as much as we can of Yurin before, uh, well, before they're able to raise another army. They do have an occasional troop. They are reforming their forces right now. We stack wipe their entire army though, so I'm not too concerned. I just really would like to stop them before it gets out of hand. And in a rate, we managed to group our armies together into two groups. And now we'll just send them on an attack. We'll send our western force to get there first, as they won't cross a river. And just like that, we have sieged, or are in the process of sieging, everything we can. Poland accepted the uh, royal marriage and union with Lithuania, so hopefully that will weaken the Russians later on. That's a very late game thing, though. At this point, we are just going to wait here in Yurin. Hopefully they will move their fleet so that we can occupy their island and fully annex them. How realistic that is, I'm not entirely sure. We've also allied with Buryatia, or the northernmost horde. There we go. Luckily, they did move their navy out of the way, which is a profoundly poor decision on, the, on behalf of their government. And with that done, we're able to just move our forces back into our own country. We'll be able to fully annex Yurin whenever we feel like it. And from there, we still need to go to war with Zhengzhou. However, they're allied to Korchin, so that's a bit of an issue. We do go ahead and just take everything we can. And there we go. We have annexed Yurin. We're able to pillage all of their territories that are above three development in total. And with that done, it's now time to declare on Korchin, or on Jingzu bringing in Korchin, I should say. And we also start giving provinces to our tribe's estate, which is the only estate that we have. And building up our army just a little bit. We core all of these provinces, as it's probably a good idea to get that done. And here's the issue with this new war we're about to declare. The enemies have a larger army than we do combined. Luckily for us, though, they're on either side of us. Now, Napoleon had something called the power of the central position, and we're going to use that right now. The idea being that if you're between two forces that combined are larger than your own, you can just pivot into any direction you want and deal damage to either side of the enemy army. So we do go ahead, and we've already done that. We stack wiped the enemy army. Luckily, incredibly luckily, we have a leader who is incredibly strong just out the bat, just uh, off the bat. So that is great news. Meanwhile, Zheng Zhu's army is sieging our capital, which gives us opportunity to siege out all of their ally. And now we just leave a force on their capital, not enough to actually actively siege, just enough to keep them from building armies and we go ahead and attack and stack wipe Zhengzhou. Our military has been doing profoundly well. And with that done, we're able to just send small sieging forces across their countryside. We're going to siege out their allies' capital before their capital. Uh, the main reason for that is, well, since Zhengzhou is the war leader, we will get a call for peace if we get up to 100% war score against them. So we need to siege out their allies first to prevent that. Meanwhile, we do start harsh treating rebel groups as, quite frankly, it would be a terrible problem for us to fight revolts. Revolts in uh, the Cossacks 
are significantly more powerful than they have been previously. So we really can't afford to take that for granted. And honestly, it may be worth the extra military power to just prevent that issue from occurring and to just not fight. Anyway, we go ahead and first of all, not core those provinces. First, we need to uh, basically use our pillage ability to lower their score or their cost and then and only then go in and core them. Now that will save us quite a bit of admin power and also give us some, which is both gr which are both great things. We also finally managed to finish the siege of Zhengzhou's capital. We can go ahead and just fully annex them as well as take a little bit of money, which is always nice. So with that all said and done, we have annexed three countries in really a remarkably short amount of time. We begin coring all of their lands. We did pillage them all once as we were able to simply because it's a really interesting mechanic. It gets us a lot of admin military and diplo points. We go ahead and just give a few lands to our tribal estate in order to get their influence and power up. And from here, we're uh, really open to the future. It's going to be a bit of time where we're just sort of stuck, at least for the moment. We do need to core our provinces. We will be able to form Manchu in a moment, which I am going to go ahead and do, as it does give us a few cores further ahead. Now, the issue we have right now, I don't really want to go to war with Korea or Ming. Ming, because it has a massive army and would just be generally a terrible problem to fight and Korea because they're allied to Ming and that's just a can of worms. So hopefully we'll be able to avoid the two of them and just keep spreading along the north. Ming usually falls apart due to rebellions and the loss of the Mandate of Heaven. Now hopefully they will have that again. We did form the Manchu and now we get a few more cores on Ming territory and claims just further throughout. So the plan at this point is not really to press the Ming though. Hopefully they'll fall apart on their own due to rebellion once they lose the mandate of China. Although, quite frankly, we can't really uh, just rely on that. So we will probably end up fighting the Ming eventually. Until then though, it's probably going to be a good idea to separate Mongolia from the Orate Horde as the Orate Horde has Mongolia as a vassal so we do go ahead and support their independence. We try to improve relations with Ming in order that we may ideally get an alliance with them. By forming Manchu, we have taken on Confucianism, which is their religion, so hopefully that will increase relations with Ming. And we do actually have an alliance with Korea, which is great. At any rate, we are more or less just waiting as we are at peace. Now our ally in the north, for whatever reason, dissolved our alliance with them. So we're going to just go ahead and move in. Unfortunately, we lost a stability just due to a rather unfortunate event. At any rate, we go ahead and attack, stack wiping their army, which is amazing news. And I am very happy that we've been doing that consistently throughout this campaign. And just like that, all we have to do is siege their capital and we will be able to annex them. We still have a truce with our pink neighbor, which is why we're not going after their lands. And we're really just waiting for Mongolia to declare independence so that we may support them in that effort. And there we go. So we will just wait a moment and see when that occurs. Unfortunately, I believe Ming just uh, declared us as a rival, which is incredibly unfortunate, as that really does limit our uh, diplomatic ability for the near future. We do go ahead and just fully annex our former ally, taking as much money as we can as well. We pillage their lands and begin to core. So just like that, we have expanded quite a bit. We could start building up a bit of a naval force, although I don't really intend to do that quite yet. Meanwhile, we do get a massive rebellion, which is very sad. I realize that we have not yet arrayed our merchants, so we do go ahead and do that now and we just combine our forces. I did get our estate to give us as much cavalry as it could. And just like that, we begin to move forward. 
and hopefully we'll be able to destroy this rebellion with ease. They are unfortunately on a mountain province, and they move to another mountain province. And quite frankly, I just don't want to risk losing our army. We do go ahead and attempt to head them off. We finally manage to succeed, and I notice an enemy army occupying us. Interestingly enough, I was not aware that we were called in to this independence war. Uh, in watching this video, I did notice the pop-up on the top left of the screen. However, I was not looking anywhere near that and completely missed it. So we do go ahead, and I did just change the message setting, so hopefully this will not occur again. We do go ahead, though, and start moving our forces against the enemy. The pink nation to our west is at war with us. We'll go ahead and just sort of destroy their armies and hopefully occupy all of their territory. Same plan as always. You, do, you will notice that uh, there is a new country that has just declared its independence. We have a core on their territory, so we will go ahead and annex them. However, at this point, it's probably more important that we support our Mongol allies and just attempt to destroy the Ore armies. Hopefully we'll stack wipe them like we stopped hopefully we will stack wipe them like every other army. Unfortunately it does not occur. So we have to follow them deep into the depth and wastelands of their countryside. Our Mongol allies decide to make peace. We don't get any territory from the pink country, which is a bit unfortunate. However, it hopefully will give us a short truce so we'll be able to declare war in the non-too-distant future. Moving forward, we continue to siege out their lands and basically just make progress in the war. Now, Mongolia isn't exactly a long-term ally. The main reason we're helping them get their independence is simply because I don't want to fight them and the Orate Horde combined. So by splitting them up, we're able to divide our enemies into more easily managed chunks Meanwhile, an Orate army attempts to destroy our uh, fleeing stack. We accidentally charge directly into rebels and lose a battle, which is deeply unfortunate. However, our remaining army is strong enough to just deal with that one stack and hopefully the other as well. Which they are, and that is amazingly great news. We've defeated the rebellion and we can move back into the Orate to defend our Mongol allies. They are facing a rather strong revolt which I'm not going to help them deal with. I want them to be independent, but I don't want them to be strong and independent. So we'll move forward, hopefully destroy this Orate army. We do split our forces up in order to just try to prevent attrition as best we can. And we move them together, hopefully they'll arrive at near the same point. And just like that, we managed to defeat the Orate army and we will just continue pressing forward deeper into their lands. I'm distinctly uncomfortable about pressing this far into enemy territory, especially when we're not likely to get anything directly in the war. However, it's going to be the quickest way to end it, and we are winning every battle, so it isn't too, too bad or too risky. And just like that, Mongolia made peace, taking a row of provinces, which does make them considerably more powerful, and then they even broke their alliance with us which is rather rude, although now we're essentially justified. We're not turning our backs on them, they already turned their backs on us. So everything that happens from now on is their fault, we can say. Anyway, with that all said and done, we move our forces back into our own countryside. It takes a bit of a while, as we were just so far outside of our country. We're going to just go ahead and group our forces together and destroy this rebellion. Luckily, we managed to do that before they take more than any one province. And with the rebels destroyed, we go ahead and just declare war on this allyless state whose lands we have a core on. We then move our army back and just allow that to be sieged. At any rate, though, we have done, I would like to say, rather well. We've formed the Manchu, and in the next episode we'll hopefully be able to declare on Mongolia and that pink state Korchin again. So thank you very much for watching, please like, share, and subscribe, we'll be back soon.